Successful community conservation in action. The most unusual off-road four-wheel drive event in the world. Climate charge is all this and more, but this bizarre motor event is best described by the crazy people who do it every year. Unique. Madness. <laughs> Scary. Adventure. Yeah, complete madness. Yeah. Dirty. Challenge. Fun. Good and tough. Clutch this journey. So it's a bit of a headache. Ah, no, it's a walk in the park. I believe it's in the top ten of things in the world to do now, that's what I heard the other day. As most chargers and fans will admit, the Rhino charge is addictively fun, and they can't help but come back for more punishment every year. Rhino charge is held in a different and remote location in Kenya every May. And this time, it's at Lorongosua Group Ranch, just north of the Tanzanian border in Maasai land. Arriving the day before the event, ready to camp, play, and compete, the competitors come from everywhere in Kenya and as far away as the UK, USA, and Australia. First stop is headquarters to check in and register. Can be divulged over the air. Next, scrutineering where competing vehicles of every shape, size and colour congregate to undergo the same strict pre-race checks and procedures. All tyres used, including spares, are branded. Then, tyre pressure is recorded. The circumference of the tyre is critical to measuring the exact distance travelled by the vehicle at the end of the event. Now this is what we do for the scrutineering, because um, they have to declare a tyre pressure, which they can run on, they can drop the tyre pressure if they wish, but they can't exceed it because that builds up the circumference of the wheel. Finally, kilometres are calculated using a GPS system. Each year, the Rhino Charge organisers find new and exact methods to control the event's standards. And each year, chargers find new ways to modify their cars and make them more competitive. We needed to have a bit more height in the car. Um, we spent a lot of time last year pulling the thing through boulders and rocks and the underside was always getting stuck. So we've actually put um, drop axles on portal axles. Um, it's lowered the gear ratio by a factor of two, so this people is now like a tractor. <laughs> Last year's winners, car number 42, have created their ideal Rhino Charge machine. Pretty heavily modified. It was once a Range Rover and it's been shortened and the engine and gearbox have been lowered and moved back to get the centre of gravity lower and, and more central. Um, it's got um, a quaif differential, which is a sort of essentially a locking differential. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty much standard. Other veteran competitors have come a long way to join the charge. Their cars are special for other reasons. Yeah, the fact I've had it for 32 years, and, um, and it's been about a bit. It's been from London to Peking. Wow, see this thing Oh, it's just camaraderie and having a good laugh in the bush. We're not serious for winning, so that doesn't enter into it. It's just nice to have fun being king, because I'm a foreigner, really. And then, there are the newcomers who don't really know what to expect. Nervous? <laughs> none of us, none of us. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know. But I've just learned. <laughs> it's for our sand yeah. level. Have we got this? Um, so we can measure the exact distance when we have to do a pass like it's luggers or you know, over rocks or whatever we're going to try and do. Yeah, a few punches and uh, beating the boys. That's what we're anticipating. <laughs> Once scrutineering is complete, the charges and spectators await the pre-race briefing. Good luck and have a good day tomorrow. Enjoy. Have a safe day. Don't do anything too crazy. At last, the moment of truth, when the control coordinates are revealed and maps are distributed. 
The night before race day, all teams huddle in camp to strategize and calculate distances. This event is won by covering the shortest distance in the least amount of time. Entrants have 10 hours to visit 13 checkpoints in any order they please. The ideal route is just over 42 kilometers. Different teams use different methods, but their aim is the same. They are all trying to find the shortest drivable course to follow tomorrow. Up before dawn, the charges meet in the dark and draw lots for their starting positions. The 55 competing cars are divided between checkpoints to discourage a follow-the-leader approach. All vehicles are officially led in convoy to wait for the shotgun start. And the Kenya Pipeline volunteer helicopter begins its day-long surveillance of course and drivers. This remote corner of Maasai land is full of hills, thick bush, thorns and luggers, and only the airborne appreciate what the charges are about to face. At 7.30 exact, the event begins. Each team goes their separate way to follow their ideal course, or at least attempt to. It's not long before the madness begins. Riding along with car number 29 and Lars Svensson, we get a front seat view of the typical charge experience. But for conservation fundraisers, this bushwhacking madness seems a bit destructive. It might be in, in fragile grassland areas, but I don't think in an area like this because I've been following this area for well over 35 years and it was much more open. And now because of very heavy grazing by cattle and the lack of elephants, it's become a very thick bush. And so really, the rhino charge vehicles can act like elephants by opening up some of the bush and allowing the fire to get back in and to recreate some of the grasslands that are now lacking. With that said, we can now enjoy this ride and amaze at Lars's exact GPS headings, which brings him to his next checkpoint. Nice bronze here. An inch further to the left, and he would have taken the whole tent down. Ah, they're crazy because no roads, no signs. That shows the car where they are passing. So you see this thing is very difficult and it's crazy. The rhino charges may be crazy indeed, but what they are raising funds for is not. For the last 15 years, the money raised by this event has gone into building the longest conservation fence in East Africa. The fence protects the Aberdare mountain ecosystem, the key water catchment for Nairobi city, and the source of five of Kenya's seven largest rivers. Inside the Aberdares live the endangered black rhino, threatened elephant, elusive bongo, primates, and multitudes of animals and exotic ferns, plants, and flowers. The flora and fauna of this irreplaceable ecosystem perform a vital role to the survival of millions of people. To safeguard the Aberdares is absolutely necessary, and the only way to do it is with an electrified game-proof fence. The fence construction is now in Phase 5, the longest section of fence line. The Phase 5 fence will protect an important high rainfall forest and water catchment area. This part of the fence is the most challenging for the builders because... It's mainly the terrain. You could see, you can see how steep uh, this section is. There are so many rivers. Uh, this makes it a very difficult section. The newly built fence line is already performing its job keeping the wildlife away from the farms and the forests safe inside. The brand new fence is tested for voltage. Kilovolts is good enough and I think that can give an uh, elephant a good kick. Elephants are the most dangerous animals for the local farmers. The electric fence keeps them and all other wildlife safely inside and away from the communities and crops. 
the rhino charge course is designed to be as challenging or easy as each driver wants to make it. Every year, the course has two tiger lines and one gauntlet. The gauntlet is created to be the ultimate test of bushcraft skill and driving technique. This year's gauntlet has a rocky upper section and a deep sand lugger. We meet up with Dennis Schumacher in car number 28 on the rocky upper section of the Where gauntlet. am I going next? Not many would attempt this technique. just successfully navigated a tiger line and feels like celebrating the Flying Dutchman, literally. Now, now this morning I fell off, exactly the same way, so, uh, but this is probably much better. No matter how difficult it gets, no one seems to lose their sense of humor. British Army car number 31 has their own way of dealing with the gauntlet's rocks. The charge may be thrilling for the competitors. I don't know what look, 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 look at these rocks. <laughs> look at what they did. Spectators, officials, and yeah. volunteers have their own reasons for participating. Fun. Protecting Kenya's environment. It's intriguing, it's exciting, it's just experimental, and it is. You just have to know where you come from. And I come from Kenya, and I appreciate Kenya. The best it has happened it is here. The best. Chills white wine. <laughs> Where's the children I want? In the car. By now, at each guard post, teams are slowing down, breaking down, and some are barely moving. Hey, how's it going? Excellent. It's tough. Enough, enough bombs, man. I mean, honestly. Um, we've broken the, the exterior, everything. <laughs> the exhaust, the intake, the battery holes. We're still running. When times are tough, it's the fans that keep you going. Meanwhile, another casualty of the war with bushes and rocks comes hobbling into a guard post. We have a rockery at the top and um, it went a bit badly and we, ro we rolled. And then it took us a long time to, to get ourselves righted. And also we've broken our starter motor so we, we couldn't just use the engine running to, to help us out. So we had to winch ourselves and to use a turfer. It's been a bit of a trauma the last two hours. At the gauntlet sand ladder, Vintage car number 41 is also getting a bit traumatized and can't make it up the steep bank. While car number 6 waits its turn, number 41 decides to take the easy way around. With the wholehearted support of the crowd, number 6 makes the best of a difficult task. what it's like to drive on this part of the course, we take a ride with car number 10. They approach the lugger with confidence. And make the crossing look so easy. Then, 
another ride with car number 56. This driver is not as sure and has to try several attempts up the embankment. Alright, so what do you think of that? Pretty poor effort, really. <laughs> Poorly, man. At this stage, some people wonder, why do this at all? Why do it here? Well, the next step's Mathari. <laughs> but why do I do it? Yeah, I get a kick out of it. It's, it's, this is a, a great event, and it's a huge rush of adrenaline, and it's a good team thing, and, well, I, I still have a buzz for motorsport. I'm not old enough to play golf yet. We're not getting with you, guys. Ah, well, we're great believers in the, in the Rhino Charge. Uh, this is a great thing for the country. It gets people together, and, um, and we're, we're looking out for the Abadeers. And also, we're helping the small farmer as well, um, so they can now harvest crops, send their children to school, which they haven't been able to do for years and years and years, because we've got that fence going around there, the whole Aberdeer. In areas where the fence has gone up, farms are now yielding good crops. Human wildlife conflict is a thing of the past, and wildlife and people can finally live peacefully beside each other. When we first started, the uh, communities were skeptical. They thought it was someone else's problem. Nowadays, they are the ones that come to us and say, please build the fence, because they know it solves so many problems they face. The lives of the farmers have improved so much that word has spread and communities are getting involved in new and innovative ways. The Gatamayu Karimenu community are participants in a new nursery project run by Rhino Ark and the African Conservation Trust. Fast-growing tree seedlings are raised in the nursery and given to community members to plant on their farms. We can use it as a fodder cloth. We can also use it as firewood. We are even proposing to use it to, buy, to produce charcoal. These new trees will be used as an alternative source of income and wood fuel. The nursery needed water and another innovative scheme was born. A pipe from a dam inside the forest was laid. This new water supply keeps the young trees growing but is also used by the local farmers for their crops. The fence has inspired communities to get involved and be partners in positive community conservation practices. It's late afternoon now and the chargers are grateful for the special treats each guard post sponsor has ready for them when they arrive. Yeah, she made her pants into shorts, so we're trying to get her naked by the end of the race. Ice cream can't quite soothe what ails this gentleman. Well, the car was going along quite nicely, and um, apparently, because I can't remember, it hit a, um, just, we just went into a, a lugger, and um, the car stopped and I didn't. On to the next guard post, and these competitors are getting close to the end. Just one more lugger to get through. And what a diabolical lugger. Car number two, rally car driver, Ian Duncan. The local Maasai have never seen such sport. And some, like these young boys dressed in circumcision attire, have hardly ever seen a car before. It's the end of the day now, and there is only a half hour left for the competitors to get to their final checkpoints. Car number 47 arrives in ladylike style, and they have one word for the course. It's bushy. Very, 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 very bushy. Comparison to all the other ones we've done, it is very bushy. I mean, I don't remember such bush. <laughs> You're looking, so fresh. You're looking fresh and the pearls are still there. You are clean. Yeah, I haven't lost any yet. Oh yeah, we all wear pearls, I tuck them in and I run through the bush. That's how it works. And keep running. You're free to go whenever you feel inclined. The Sophia sisters have done all 15 charges since the beginning. 
And so has car number 12, Jazz Semi driving. His daughters act as his navigators, scouts, and tire changers. The clock is ticking and the fans are waiting. Last year's winner, car number 42, is coming into its final checkpoint just under the wire. They have had a challenging charge, but all that matters to them now is that they've finished. We had a few problems. Ben, steering rod just down here. To start with, the leaking radiator, the winch broke, and we've broken a half shot. So we're actually lucky to get to the finish. We don't expect to win, but we at least we've made it to the end. And we're happy to be here. <laughs> and what do strapping young lads do when they don't reclaim last year's title? Dress in drag. Well, the charge is officially over and everyone rolls back to camp to have their GPSs read, lick their wounds, have a few beers and wait until morning to hear the results. The results are posted bright and early. There are some pleasant surprises like second for car number 38 who didn't expect to finish so high. Third place goes to last year's winners, car number 42. And the first place winner is no surprise. Rob Collins does it again. Car number 33, Rob Collins, 48.73 kilometers. The overall winner who raised the most money and competed with the highest score is car number five. 59,213 shillings. Well done, guys. But today's biggest winners are the local Maasai community who will receive over two million shillings in camping fees which will be used for a much needed water well project. I think that is very great given that uh, the community within two days have uh, managed to get two million for a water project. I think that is great. that's great. And they will remember the Rhine Act for a long time to come because it's like we've really addressed their, their main problem. However, the most amazing amount is the 32 million shillings raised this year for the fence. And every time we come to one of these rhino charges, we seem to raise more money. And, and thanks to this rhino charge, raising 32 million, uh, we've got enough to complete about 211 kilometers of the 360 that have to be done. And um, so we are well over halfway. So the fence will continue on its path, stretching around the perimeter of the Aberdares. And because of the fence, endangered and threatened species such as black rhino, elephant, and bongo are rebuilding their populations without the constant threat from poachers. A recent bongo survey suggests a population of 60 in the higher regions of the mountain forest. Once phase five is finished, the fence will be three quarters way around the Aberdares. Many more rhino charges will be needed to fund the completion of the fence through the final phase eight. Yet, it won't be difficult to convince these charges to come back and charge some more. You know, once you've done it once, you just keep on coming back for more. The suckers for punishment, all rhino charges are. So, for those who make it all possible, what do they have to say about the Rhino Charge this year? Hard, very hard. <laughs> it was great. I would say that this was the 
tough and rough and good and the bushes. Okay, so it's bush, man. So you think you'd never think we'd ever get through it? Much too much bush. Thorn, 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 thorn. Yeah. Yeah. Prickly. It's it's like sports day after a hard term at school. It's letting off steam. It's just fun. You're not serious, Anna. Yeah. Yeah. You're stupid to do it sober. Deadly. May it happen twice a year. <laughs> You've got to be mad.